It's Bible time. <gasps> it's Bible time. It's Bible time. It's, it's Bible, Bible time. time. <gasps> it's Bible time with Aunt JJ. It's, it's Bible time with Aunt JJ. It's Bible time with Aunt JJ. That's me. Get your Bible if you have one, because it's time to study the Bible together. The Bible is God's Word. God helps men write it so we can know for sure that everything in it is completely true. So far, we have learned that God created the world and everything in it. He promised to send a rescuer when sin entered the world. He promised the rescuer would come from Abraham's family. He used many miracles to free his people from slavery in Egypt and kill their enemies. His people responded with worship. They sang songs about the greatness of God. Today, we're going to find out what happened next. We're going to read from the book of Exodus. Exodus is the second book in the Old Testament and is a book of the law. Exodus records true things that really happened with real people. At this point in history, God's people, the Israelites, had crossed the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army died when the water went back in its place. The Israelites were finally and totally free from the Egyptians. They were going through the wilderness to the land God had promised them. After all the ways God showed his power and helped his people, surely they were grateful and followed him with thankful hearts, right? Well, I used emojis to summarize the main events of what happened. What do you think they represent? What do you think happened? Hmm. What could the emojis mean? Hmm. Decide what you think they will mean. We will read the passage and then see if you are correct. I'm going to read from Exodus 16 and 17. When I read about the Israelites being thankful and grateful, give me a thumbs up. When I read about the Israelites complaining about things, give me a thumbs down. In the desert, the whole community told Moses and Aaron they weren't happy with them. The Israelites said to them, We wish the Lord had put us to death in Egypt. There, we sat around pots of meat. We ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert. You must want this entire community to die of hunger. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the people of Israel talking about how unhappy they are. Tell them, when the sun goes down, you will eat meat. In the morning, you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening, quail came and covered the camp. In the morning, the ground around the camp was covered with dew. When the dew was gone, thin flakes appeared on the desert floor. They looked like frost on the ground. The people of Israel saw the flakes. They asked each other, what's that? They didn't know what it was. Moses said to them, It's the bread the Lord has given you to eat. The Israelites called the bread manna, which means, What is it? God told them to only get enough food for each day and to get twice as much food on the sixth day because there wouldn't be any food to collect on the seventh day, the Sabbath day, a day of rest. The Israelites did not always obey. Sometimes they tried to collect more than God said, but the extra always went bad and they could not eat it. Sometimes they tried to collect manna on the Sabbath day, but there wasn't any to collect. The Israelites ate manna for 40 years. They traveled from place to place, just as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there wasn't any water for the people to drink. So they argued with Moses. They said, give us water to drink. Moses replied, why are you arguing with me? Why are you testing the Lord? But the people were thirsty for water there. So they told Moses they weren't happy with him. They said, why did you bring us out of Egypt? Did you want us, our children, and our livestock to die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord. God told Moses to hit a specific rock with his staff. Water came out of it for the people to drink. How many times did you give a thumbs up? Zero. These verses didn't record gratitude or thankfulness. How many times did you give a thumbs down? Two. The people complained when they were hungry. And they didn't just whine a little bit. They questioned God's plan and said they were better off in Egypt. God was faithful to provide what they needed, 
even though they did not always obey his instructions on collecting the food. God was teaching them about himself, about his trustworthiness, and about obedience. They didn't seem to have learned much by the time they camped at a place with no water. Did they think about how God had continually provided miracle food for them? Did they turn to God and ask for his help? Nope. They complained again. God was gracious and merciful. He miraculously provided water from a rock. To review what happened, let's look back at our emoji summary and see what the emojis represent from our passage. We will see if your predictions were correct. The people had no food. They complained. God told them what to do. In the evenings, God provided quail. In the mornings, God provided manna. The people had enough food for each day. The people had no water. They complained. God told Moses what to do. Moses took his staff and hit a rock. Water came out of the rock. The people had water to drink. Did you guess correctly? Now that you know what happened, can you use the emojis to tell someone else what happened? Or can you draw your own emoji summary to tell the main events? The people did not remember what God had done for them. Let's do what we can to remember God's faithfulness. Now it's time for Eyes on Him, the part of our lesson when we focus on what the scriptures say about God. When you sit in the Bible, look for what the scripture reveals or shows about God. Then think about how that knowledge of God should impact, change, matter to your life. I see God's creativity. The people were hungry and thirsty. What could be done? God had amazing creative plans for meeting their needs. His solution for the food was so creative that people didn't even know what to call it when they saw it. They called it manna, which means, what is it? Isn't that awesome? And God brought water from a rock. It couldn't have been just a drop or a little bit. It was enough water for the people from a rock. God's creativity is not limited like ours is. He can think of anything. God was so incredibly creative in the way he provided for his people. I also see God's power. Not only was his plan to meet their needs incredible, but he had the power to make it happen. I can think of lots of things in my mind, but I am limited on what I can actually make happen. Even when I'm just making a craft or a gift for someone, the idea usually looks better in my head than it looks when I'm finished making it. That's not the case with God. God is limitless. He can do anything. He can make plans that are higher and better than our plans, and he can make them happen. He showed his power in providing food for them every day and water from a rock. I see God's incredible grace and mercy. His people were so ungrateful for all he did. They kept complaining and didn't trust in him, even though he kept providing for them in miraculous ways, in ways only God could provide. He didn't give up on them or leave them. He didn't stop providing for them, even though they didn't show appreciation for his provision. He continued to be gracious and merciful. When I read about the manna, I think about what Jesus said, recorded in the sixth chapter of John. Listen to John 6, 47 through 51. What I'm about to tell you is true. Everyone who believes has life forever. I am the bread of life. Long ago, your people ate the manna in the desert and they still died. But here's the bread that comes down from heaven. A person can eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Everyone who eats some of this bread will live forever. This bread is my body. I will give it for the life of the world. Jesus is the bread of life. Everyone who trusts in Jesus will have eternal life in him. If you want to know more about what it means to trust in Jesus, watch the separate video called How to Become a Christian. We need Jesus. Jesus is the bread of life. What else does this passage show you about God? How should you live differently because of who God is? And now it's time for the Wheel of Wonder. The time in our lesson when we spin the wheel and wonder. What will our Wheel of Wonder question be today? It landed on pink. Our Wheel of Wonder question for today is, what was the manna like? The Bible gives us a little bit of information about what manna was like. 
pieces of manna were thin flakes. They looked like frost on the ground. What does that look like? This is a picture of frost on a field. Manna was white, like coriander seeds. This is a picture of coriander seeds. Manna tasted like wafers made with honey. Oh, that sounds delicious. It also looks like sap from a tree. Here is a picture of sap from a tree. It's a thick, slow-moving liquid. That's how the Bible describes manna. It was like nothing they had ever seen before. Putting all of these descriptions together, it sounds to me kind of like a thin, flaky, soft honey biscuit. I bet it was delicious. And although the Bible doesn't say, I imagine God also made it nutritious because he used it and the quail in the evenings to feed the people for 40 years. Based on how the scriptures describe manna, what do you think it was like? God is amazing. He provided so graciously for his people. Unfortunately, they didn't trust him to provide for them. And when God did provide for them, they didn't respond with worship or even thanksgiving. They took what God gave them and went on with their lives. God is a gracious and merciful provider. He is always faithful. He is patient with us and works in our lives to help us trust him. Will you remember what God has done for the Israelites and for you? Will you trust in him? Let's pray. Holy Father, there is no one like you. You are mighty. You are loving. You provide for us even though we don't deserve your good gifts. Please help us to learn from your word. Help us remember all you've done. Help us to know you better and love you more. Help us to trust in you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Well, sweet friends, I love studying God's word with you today. There's no better time than Bible time. And I hope you'll join me next time for Bible time with Aunt JJ. Like this video, subscribe to this channel, and go to BibleTimeWithAuntJJ.com for free activities that go along with today's Bible study. It's Bible time with Aunt JJ.